So how did uh, the the Yaakov of today, how did Rabbi Akiva became wealthy? The Gemara now wants to dispel the notion that Rabbi Akiva became wealthy by deriving benefit from his Torah learning. From six incidents did Rabbi Akiva become wealthy. Number one, Rabbi Akiva became wealthy from his father-in-law. We learned that Kalba Savua first this, uh, inherited him, told him you're not getting anything, told his daughter you're not getting it. His daughter Rachel, he said you married a bum. At that time he was 40 years old, didn't know how to read. Told him, you married a bum, you embarrassed me, he was a very prominent guy. So he disowned him, he disowned his daughter. But after he came back with 24,000 students, Rabbi Kaaba uh, Savua uh, asked to, for, the, for the vow that he made to be an old, his vow was an old, and he gave Rabbi Akiva, some say it was half of his wealth, he gave to Rabbi Akiva. So number one, Rabbi Akiva became wealthy from Kaaba Savua. Number two, from the uh, figurehead of a ram that was on a sheep. What does it mean? Because every sheep used to have a wooden figurehead on its bow in the form of a ram as a good luck charm. Okay? And they would uh, fill this hollow ram with gold coins. Once such a wooden ram was forgotten on the beach. Now Rabbi Akiva came and found it full of gold coins. A ram full of gold coins inside. So that's the, uh, another reason why Rabbi Akiva was wealthy. Number three, from a treasure chest of a sheep. For Rabbi Akiva, for Rabbi Akiva once gave four zoos to the sailors of a sheep and told them, pick me up some piece of merchandise. However, all they found was an old chest that had washed up on the shore. So they brought that to him and said to him, Master, sit on this chest in the meantime and wait while we try to get you the merchandise you want. Imagine. So Rabbi Akiva opened it up. He found that it was full of golden dinars. For one time a ship had sunk and all the treasures of the passengers had been dis deposited in that chest. And it was found at that time. Number four, from the incident with the nobleman. It doesn't write it here yet. What was the incident with the noble, I'm sorry, with the noble woman? And uh, from the wife of Tunus Rufus. From, and number six, from Ketia ben Shalom. The Gemara relates a similar story. Rabbi Gamda gave four zoos to sailors and asked them to purchase something for him. When the sailors could not obtain what Rabbi Gamda has requested, they brought him a monkey. The monkey escaped and fled into a hole. When they dug after it, they found the monkey laying on precious gems. And they brought the gems to Rabbi Gamda. The daughter of the emperor said to Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanina, such splendid wisdom in such an ugly vessel. So she meant to say Rabbi Yeshua ben Hanina, his uh, facial look did not, uh, was, I guess, did not pair up with the fashion of the time. So she decided he wasn't, it was not a good looking guy. But she still said such a, she understood he was a very smart man. So she said such a splendid wisdom in such an uh, ugly vessel. So Bishim and Hanina was very ugly. That's what, they, that's what they, they write. So he replied, you will find the answer in your father's pa uh, palace. Where did they store the wine? He said to her. She, she responded, in uh, earthenware, jars. But ordinary people store their wine in earthenware jars too. 
So what's the, the uniqueness of your father, a wine cellar? Regular people store their wine in earthenware vessel, and your father is doing the same as the king. Why over here you created it? You should store your wine in vessels made of silver and gold. So she went and had the wine poured into silver and gold vessels. But it turned sour. So now Rabbi Yeshua ben Khalina told her, it's the same thing with the Torah. But aren't there, she responded, meaning, you want to say, look, I'm not uh, good looking, but I can still possess the Torah. Earthenware vessel possessing a, a, is, is a, keeping the wine from souring, even though it's not such a beautiful <coughs> vessel. You put it in gold or silver, here it, it becomes sour. If a, a guy is gifted with a, with a very good look, it might be to his detriment. So you're saying he you wouldn't be able to learn Torah, he would be involved with partying, with whatever it is. So, Imagine how much most of the, the good looking guys. <laughs> I used to think I was right? good looking. No, it's true. It's, it's the first. It, might, it could be a gift, it could be a course. There was rabbis there. So that's, that's her question. He said, But aren't there, uh, there handsome men who are also Torah scholars? So the, uh, she asked, if they, were, if they were ugly, they would be even greater scholars, he, he told us. So they were much, I guess, that's according to this, according to Rabbi Yeshua and Hanina, they would be the less distracted. You know, I got a lot going for me. Uh, I don't feel so bad anymore now. <laughs>